Get ready to wow your audiences. For this assignment, you will select a cumulative folktale, one in the public domain, practice and apply storytelling techniques, and present your story to your classmates for their feedback. Remember, you must select a cumulative folktale in the public domain. Here are some well-known examples. The Little Red Hen. Old Woman and Her Pig. The Gingerbread Man. There are also lesser-known cumulative tales, too, like this one, Too Much Talk. And how will you know if the tale is in the public domain? You will find it in the library in the 398.2 Folktale section. Here's a quick review of the storytelling techniques we have explored together. Beginning. Your beginning is dependent on your audience. Some younger audiences may need you to contextualize the story in a particular time or place. Some audiences may need help with key vocabulary. Other times, you may want to introduce the characters. For some stories, you will simply jump in and tell. Eye contact. When you are using a camera as your audience, you can make eye contact with a single source. When you have a live audience sitting in front of you theater style, you will want to maintain eye contact using the T method. Find one person in the middle of the audience to be your central focus. Then consistently scan the back row of your audience from left to right and from right to left using the T method. Everyone in your audience will experience eye contact directly from you. Voice. Your voice is your storytelling instrument. Think about the tone of your voice. Can you sound surprised? Nervous? Happy? Sad. What emotions can you convey with your voice? Are you someone who can speak well and consistently using different voices? If yes, use them. If not, determine another way to indicate different characters' speaking parts. Volume. Be aware of opportunities to whisper or to shout. When you choose to stage whisper or to speak softly, be sure your audience can still hear you. Pacing. When do the events in your story suggest you should speed up? When should you slow down to build suspense? Facial expressions. Along with your voice, your facial expressions convey your emotions. When you review your own practice tellings, what does your face say? Are you surprised? Angry? Confused? Gestures. How can you use your body to emphasize your words or to substitute for the need for words? Some stories lend themselves to large, sweeping gestures. More quiet stories will need subtler movements. Do what is comfortable for you and use gestures to keep your audience engaged. Props and costumes. Props and costumes are always optional. If you are comfortable with props, such as puppets or flannel boards, use them. They do require extra practice, so be sure you allow time for that. Costumes can be fun. They can be as simple as this piece of imitation kente cloth. Make sure your costume allows you freedom of movement and does not interfere with your voice being heard. Engagement. Cumulative stories provide automatic opportunities for audience participation. My experience is involving your audience in your telling is one way to transfer their attention from you to the story itself. If you do not intend to elicit audience participation, use the other storytelling techniques you are learning to keep your audience engaged throughout your story. Ending. Be careful not to talk past your ending. 
especially for younger audiences, your ending should come in short order after the climax of your story. If you have to say the end, do so. If you can determine another way to indicate to your audience that you have reached the end of your story, that's even better. You are invited to tell this cumulative story to a live audience, or you may simply tell your story to a video capture audience. If you tell to a live audience, shoot over their heads, capture the backs of their heads, or be sure you have their permission to distribute their faces on the web. Get ready to wow your audiences, enjoy your practice, and share your polished retelling.